Hi, I'm Trevor Dadson, uh, Professor of Hispanic Studies at Queen Mary University of London. Uh, I'm the new Editor-in-Chief of Hispanic Research Journal. Uh, my own research interests are mainly 16th and 17th century Spanish history and literature, uh, but I also move into other areas, Portuguese, 20th century, Spanish poetry, uh, and so on. And uh, I'm excited to be the new editor of our journal. Uh, I'm Rafe Penny, and I've just ceased being editor-in-chief of, of, the, of the journal. Um, I'm happy in a way to pass it over to Trevor, but uh, sad at the same time, because I've been involved in the journal right from the beginning, as indeed Nigel has, who, who's here with us. Um, the history of the journal is, is quite an interesting one. There was a, there was a, it has a prehistory as well as a history, because the department started um, a, a journal called Journal of Hispanic Studies, uh, which issued, I think it went to three volumes, and a, three volumes and a bit. But we kind of fell out with our, um, with our publisher, and we fell in very much with Mamie um, a couple of years after the, the, the demise of that uh, sort of pre-journal. So 11 years ago, uh, we um, made our first contract with, with Mamie, and the, it has been, I think, um, success all the way since, since then. We began with a with three issues a year, and that continued for many years, and we, we got an increasing number of articles coming in from, indeed, pretty much all over the world, particularly, I, I, of course, the Spanish-speaking world, but a lot from other parts of Europe and uh, the United States as well, uh, to, to, a, uh, to a large degree. We went to four issues per year. I think that was... 2004. 2004, so five years in, uh, I think, uh, we went to that. You've looked up the history. I'm glad, I'm glad you've done that, Trevor. <laughs> and we continue to be able to publish, publish I think, high-quality material at that, um, at, the, at that enhanced level. My own work uh, is primarily in linguistics, in the variation within Spanish and Romance more, more generally, and the history of the Romance languages. Um, I think I would, I would be very keen if there were more material coming in in my, in my field, uh, but then I, I guess we all feel that in our, in our, in our own particular ways. Um, I won't say anything about the expansion to five issues, which was, of course, uh, when we expanded into the visual arts, uh, that's for Nigel, for Tom to, to talk about. So there's a little bit about the, um, the background to my well, form. That's a good moment, I think. Uh, perhaps I'll turn to, to Nigel, who can uh, introduce himself and tell us about how we, we moved into having a fifth issue every year on visual arts. I'm Nigel Flintini, and um, Emeritus Professor of Spanish at Queen Mary University of London. Um, in 2001, um, a group of us who were interested in the Hispanic arts, in Portuguese to Iberian and uh, Latin American as well, um, got together to see whether we shouldn't create a society. And uh, we did indeed create one called Artis, um, Iberian and Latin American Visual Culture Group it was called, and it still exists. And one of the first objectives of this group, which was to bring together the rather scattered scholars in, interested in the Hispanic arts and in Latin America, um, bring them together and involve them in publications. And so it was an early wish of this newly formed group that it should have some kind of um, periodical. We got one thin periodical, or bulletin, um, as a result of the support of the Instituto Cervantes. Um, and then, largely through Marjorie Trusted, who was the first editor of the visual arts series, before Tom took over from her very recently, um, she had a lot of contacts in the States and uh, thought that our new association of artists ought to work in conjunction with the American Association or American Society for Hispanic Art Historical Studies 
um, or Ash Ash, and um, that they could combine with us in a more substantial publication than the bulletin which we produced. So um, it was Marjorie, as it happens, who was pushing this more than anybody else, um, together with her uh, American colleagues, um, Jordana Mendel Mendelssohn, more particularly at that point. Um, and I remember that in 2004, we had a rather significant meeting in a cafe not far from the Victoria and Albert Museum where Marjorie worked. And um, there we met Mark Simon from Maynes. And um, it was he, I think, in the first instance, who said, well, rather than having an independent journal of your own, why don't you um, expand an area which already existed in the Hispanic Research Journal? Um, because there the were articles on visual culture, film notably, um, but also on other aspects of visual culture. And um, that's what really started it. And so very shortly after that, um, the first visual arts number, um, not specifically numbered, as a matter of fact, without a number, <laughs> came out, I think that was 2006, was it? Oh, so I think we, we, we had a meeting, obviously, with the Board of Hispanic Research Journal um, and um, those of us who came from Artes were made welcome. I was already on the editorial board of the Hispanic Research Journal as it happened. And um, it got off the ground very easily, thanks largely to um, Wraith and, of course, thanks hugely to Marjorie Trusted, who in the early days was extremely good at getting good quality articles for publication in the visual arts number. 